Well, yesterday we were looking at the chronological Bible and we were looking at the 55 events in the Galilean ministry of Jesus, uh, event 17. And uh, we said we were going to break it down because it's the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 5, it goes all the way from chapter 5 through chapter 7. Uh, and in Luke, it's just a summary, just a, a few verses. So uh, we, we looked at the uh, blessings and the woes uh, first, and then we looked at the similitudes of salt and light, and then we looked at the subject of murder. Uh, and we were basically saying this is a Ten Commandments kind of expanded because the next subject is adultery, which would be the Seventh Commandment. But remember, it just says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, here, when we look at Jesus' expansion of the attitude involved in, in these commandments, uh, he looks at uh, and expands it and says, look, if a man looks at a woman with lust in his heart and uh, is really in his mind having adultery with her, he's committed the act already. Now, I really appreciate uh, a pastor that... Uh, was up here in uh, Landrum, South Carolina for a number of years at First Baptist Landrum and then finally died of a heart attack. But, but I appreciate what he used to say. He used to say, uh, you can't help looking at something like a woman with a good figure and a good, good face, but you don't have to turn it into a full-length motion picture or lust after her. And I appreciate that because I think that's exactly what men have to remember. There's certainly nothing wrong with admiring a woman that has good form and face. Uh, however, if your admiration goes beyond the admiration for the fact that she's very attractive and starts to become a lustful thought, uh, imagining what it would be like to be with her in an intimate situation, now it has gone from being just admiration into lust. And James talks about uh, lust. In James 1, 13, he says, uh, uh, lust uh, will lead to the birth of sin, and sin lead to death. So we see that James was fully in agreement with Jesus that uh, you're enticed by your own lust. Uh, there's a big difference between a glance and a gaze. A glance is something you can't help. A gaze is something that you control with your mind and where your body and your eyes are pointed. Uh, let me say that again for you. A glance is noticing. A gaze is turning it into a full-length motion picture where you continue to focus in on that object. And uh, James 1.13 certainly tells us that Jesus was absolutely correct, that we have to be very careful that our glances don't become gazes and our lust doesn't entice us into turning into sin. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to act on it, but Jesus said if you're already thinking it, you, you might as well have conducted it. Now I'm not justifying to go ahead and conduct uh, an intimacy relationship with someone. Uh, that's not at all the point here. Uh, the point is we need to learn how to control our thought process and replace them. Uh, for me, one of the ways that I've done that over the years is to say, get out of here, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I don't want those thoughts in my mind, uh, turning my head away from whatever I'm looking at. Now, whether that's something that inadvertently comes across the Internet or whether that's something that uh, is live and, and around me in real life. Uh, men are men, and they do have tend to have lustful minds. and. We need to be very, very much aware that we need to can learn to control our looks and our thought patterns and to rebuke Jesus, rebuke the devil rather, and ask Jesus to help us to control our mind thoughts. I think uh, it was Fireproof, one of the movies that came out uh, that uh, really emphasized the fact that we need to be very careful what we expose our eyes and our mind to whether it's the internet, whether it's movies, uh, television, uh, or just live action uh, here on this earth, uh, such as going down to the beach where there's uh, skimpily clad women. Uh, we need to be careful that we don't put ourselves into situations where we don't control our eyes and our minds and allow what would be a glance to become a gaze. 
So Jesus is very clear here. He says, don't even look at a woman uh, with that lustful heart uh, because you might as well have already committed the act. You, you've already committed adultery in your mind. And so we need to uh, understand. He goes on, one other uh, point he makes, he says, uh, uh, when he drives home the point about the uh, looking, he says, you know, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. Well, he doesn't literally mean to pluck out your eye, but uh, you certainly need to be careful what you look at. But then he goes on and talks about his hand, and I want to touch base on that as well. Uh, one of the dangers uh, that we find with men and women is that women are naive and men are lustful and many times a woman might hug a man or touch their hand or touch their body with their hand uh, or allow a man to embrace or to touch a woman uh, where she doesn't mean anything by it but the man thinks she does with his lustful mind and it becomes sinful and so one of the other things that I always suggest to men is to be sure that you're not hugging somebody that's uh, anywhere near your age. Uh, make sure that your hugs are uh, on a 90-year-old and not not on a uh, on a, somebody that's close to your age. And of course, today with all of the dangers of pedophilia, or at least accusations of pedophilia, it's a very very good idea to be very careful about your manner of touch with any children. Uh, it's a shame that we can't. Uh, embrace a child uh, as a father would embrace his own daughter without somebody saying that's an inappropriate embrace but uh, that's kind of where we are with our society so unless it's your own child uh, that you're embracing with a, a, a typical affection brace of, of father to daughter uh, you need to be very careful with your embraces of uh, females and uh, women Remember that if somebody's close to your age, it's not a good idea to touch them. It's not a good idea to embrace them uh, and to cause them to lust or to uh, uh, think that maybe you mean something by it that's uh, more than just a friendship. Uh, so I hope that you'll remember that uh, Jesus made very clear. Men are lustful, women are naive, and we need to be very, very careful uh, that glances don't become gazes and touches don't become lustful uh, and then we'll be sure to stay away from the sin that uh, brings about the death uh, and uh, we can be sure that we're following exactly what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples here on the Sermon on the Mount. God bless you and have a great day. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. All of us are guilty. There's written, there's none that's righteous, not even one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. For with a mouth man confesses, and with a heart he believes. And whoever believes and calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved.